Have you ever had a 100% accuracy game? Woo wee, if you have a great job, if you haven't, hopefully it's on the way for you. But today we have five perfect 100% accuracy games. Let's check this first one. This one is actually Narayan Naval Good versus International Master Zuber which, with three R's. This was in the title Tuesday. Let's see what happened. In fact, E4, E5, and then Knight F3 and F5. Okay, well, uh, here, this is, uh, don't try this at home, of course, but you can, it just may not work in your favor, and a lot of times there's lots of tricks here, lots of fun and tricks, this is why people play this opening, it's tricky, it's fun, it's like tactics, some weird stuff that happens, but the F5 move, so F5, this is uh, called the Latvian Gambit, but White plays this 100% accurately by playing Knight C3, just defending the pawn, right, we can also take on E5, in many cases, if F takes E4, Black is like, hey, you know what, whatever, let's just go Knight to C6, defend, you didn't fall for my tricks, White's like, absolutely, Absolutely not. I'm going to play D4, strike in the center. Stuff's getting very strange and open. And you've already opened, you know, your F pawn here. You can get in trouble very, very fast. So, okay, cool. After the D4 move, F takes E4. Now, in this position, you know, your knight's hanging, right? And also this pawn's hanging. So the best move here would be knight takes C5, right? Still 100% accuracy. If knight takes E5, we have our own stuff like, you know, pawn takes. We have some queen H5 action. Knight takes E4 is also a uh, thing as well. This diagonal is super open right because we push the f pawn so knight of six stopping a queen h5 and then white plays bishop c4 and says oh you're not going to castle number one i'm also threatening f7 so black makes a logical move here and plays d5 now it's white to move of course 100 percent accuracy every move was right here for white what is that move in fact white to move what do you do in this position the move here is in fact even nakamura actually missed this trick as well is Knight takes d5. You're playing like an engine now. That is correct. Knight takes d5. That's a big move from a big fella. What happens? Okay, well, if knight takes d5, which happened in the game, queen h5 check with g6. Oh, yeah, we're going to win the rook, right? You're familiar with this tactic. If not, do more puzzles, do more tactics every day, right? So after g6, knight takes g6, and we're expecting a pawn takes g6, right? So we can just take the rook. We can also probably just take on here and play bishop g5 next. I mean, you have, you're for choice. You can do whatever you like, in fact. After knight takes g6, black goes knight f6, thinking they're being clever. Oh, I'm being very clever here. You move your queen away, I'm going to move my rook and I'm gonna be fine, right? After you move the queen, maybe I could go, I mean, this is so bad, like you can even take there. <laughs> this is just very problematic for the black pieces, for sure. I mean, it already started with the opening. But after knight of six hitting the queen, okay, what do we play in this position? Is white to move 100% accuracy, what do you play? The move here is an attraction tactic. Bishop f7, that's a big move there, pretty nice extra nice, 100% nice. Of course, after bishop f7, very nice. If king to d7, we have queen f5, king to d6, and then bishop f4 is going to checkmate, right? Let's actually just show that here. And then uh, queen d5, king d6, bishop f4, and mate. Okay, well, mating after knight e5. It's gonna be mate, mate soon, mate, mate soon. In fact, bishop f4 is not mate yet, but it's definitely gonna mate soon. I mean, obviously your king is on d6, okay? All right, cool, that's not gonna be good at all, any way, shape, and or form. So after bishop f7 check, there's king takes f7, and then knight uh, knight e5, which is checking. Very nice, you also could've taken the rook, but this is even better. Knight e5, uh, king e6, queen f7, king d6, and the finale move is what? That's for you to figure out right now, what does white play in this position? Here it is, you're correct, it is knight, to c4 and you move no more that is checkmate get him off the board great job there guys that was cool this was a hundred percent game this was number five let's move to number four okay guys here's our next 100 percent accuracy game with the white pieces we have a man named magnus carlson I wonder if we've heard of that guy before versus a d-pan chakravarthi right this was back in 2004 actually so let's check this game out it's 100 percent accuracy game e4 c5 we got a sicilian on the board knight c3 it's a little bit different move, mixing up some move orders people just uh, sometimes don't know what to do here and it is kind of annoying when you see you know the knight c3 from a sicilian player side you're like i don't know what you're gonna play next right the main move is actually e5 but knight f6 was chosen here and then bishop to b5 right so pretty pretty nice uh very not very very like rosalimo like it's weird it's very strange you know for the sicilian players so after bishop b5 
there was e5 now e5 here is not the most accurate way it should be with the knight back actually back on g8 here but okay it is playable bishop takes c6 first so taking the the, the knight d takes c6 and then knight takes c5 I'll, I'll take the pawn you're gonna give me the pawn and then black plays the knight's move knight takes e4 right he's like oh i'm gonna get that right back he's like what do you mean i'm gonna get that right back right he just stole a piece or he stole a pawn here we got a piece of course, actually, after knight takes c5, knight takes c4, right? It looks kind of strange. We took a piece, he took a pawn, but then queen d4 is the idea. We actually get it right back. Now, we're going to move through some, some moves um, quicker here because we have more games to look at, and this is a longer game. So after queen d4, white castle. Pretty easy. Get the, get the king out of the center. Queen takes e5. You already feel like white has an advantage or something because of just rook e1. You feel that you can actually do some things here and be quite annoying. Rook to e1, which puts pressure on this whole file here. But... The move here was actually d4. That right there is a sick move. d4, wow. I mean, it's very interesting to say the least, right? This is a dynamic uh, piece or dynamic move, um, which is very strong. It's also very tricky. If queen takes d4, we're playing for initiative here. We just want to open up the game. We play queen f3, then something like rook to e1, right? You can also play bishop e3 at the right moment. We play c3, all kind of stuff. It's just playing for initiative here. After the d4 move, it's dynamic. So c takes d4 was actually the move in the game. After c takes d4, right, we go rook e1. And the idea here, of course, is you obviously can't take the knight in a, in a, even back here. D4, queen takes e4, rook e1. So he knows he takes d4, rook to e1 is now played, and then bishop to e6. Question mark move, you just move the queen. Right, you, you actually had to move the queen like somewhere strange, which is actually, I mean, it's kind of hard to see. You're gonna play bishop e7 and king e d8. Bishop e6 is a move, but it's just not, not, that, not that good of a move, to be honest. After bishop e6, the move here for white is what? What does white do here to get an advantage? You need an advantage here, and this one's not that easy to find. What is the move? The move here for white actually is nothing super spectacular, just a development move. Bishop to g5, right? Is you have development problems. You want to put the bishop where, right? Maybe on e7. So now if you put the bishop on e7, you're not going to castle. f6 is going to mean, come on, this is really ridiculous, right? Knight takes f6 even as the first move we can play. We're also threatening things like knight f6 myself. So bishop e7, right? Bishop e7 was play here. Now you can go knight f6 which is a thing. I mean, you also, black has some compensation, right? After knight of six, I mean, bishop takes, rook takes e5, bishop takes, like this isn't that clear cut. Even the engine thinks that it's quite equal right now, even though you do have the queen um, over, you know, the queen, rook and bishop and two bishops versus two rooks. Like black is okay. Black is very playable here, but okay. After the bishop e7 move, we have f4 from white, which hits the queen pretty strong. We want to be initiative, move fast, do things with time. Uh, so we can save time queen d5 and then we want to keep the king in the center and we also want to play on initiative speed development time so the move here is bishop b7 doesn't give him time to take or castle king takes e7 right now we want to think initiative again forward moving forward white to move what do you do in this position what did magnus carlson play he played the move f5 very strong if bishop takes f5, we have knight c3 check, winning the queen. And if queen takes f5, which is actually the game move, you're supposed to do that, well, then we can take on d4. Your king's in the center. Pieces are level, right? We have the same amount of material besides a pawn. I mean, white is down a pawn, but you don't even feel that. Like, you don't even feel that because of the fact that, like, g7's hanging, king's in the center, dark squares are extremely weak, queen b4 is coming. This is very, very, very annoying and hard to play from the black side. Now, of course, we still have lots of moves here, so let's go through it. Queen d5, queen b4 check c5 happened because if you move the king there's knight d6s there's also a rook a to d1s right rook a to, so problems knight takes c5 a5 happens he wants to hit the queen queen obviously moves back to a3 so we can keep the, the diagonal on to the king queen d4 check gotta step out the way queen b3 we want to trade queens magnus says no queen e3 and there's no more game and this was a hundred percent accuracy and this is 20 moves yikes that's very strong and this was in 2004 Magnus, wow, that's amazing. But this was another one of those 100% games. Now let's look at another one. Here we are with our next 100% accuracy game. And this one goes way back, 1892. We have Siegbert Taras versus York Marco. Okay, perfect, let's see what it was. It was E4 and then E5, nine of three. 
and knight c6. Bishop b5 for Roy or Rui Lopez, right? Played all the way even back then. Now, after bishop b5, d6 was the move here. Usually a6 is the more common move uh, nowadays. Is a6. You can also play knight f6. You can play d6. You can play anything. But back then, of course, d6 was just a little bit more common. After the d6 move, we have d4 right which is nice striking in the center this is a cool way to play right and this is why with the a6 um I option bishop a4 you have an additional b5 but here you don't have it so d4 is we're trying to take advantage of that right bishop to d7 and then knight to c3 so we're just developing our pieces knight f6 happens after the knight f6 move castles very common stuff after bishop b7 we have um the rook e1 move now this rook e1 move actually is uh there's like a little bit dubious and there's a dubious sign here of course because uh, usually you can take there's actually wesley so nakamura game bishop takes c6 right is a thing and then you can actually play queen to d3 and bishop e3 just having a slight pull on a slight edge for white um there but rookie one it does make sense though it defends the pawn defends the pawn it's also a natural move to make you can always play bishop f1 at some point we're also threatening to try to take on c6 and take on e5 without worrying about e4 hanging let's see what happens after castles he's like oh wait a second hold on like uh, what is this move like this is a mistake in fact this is a well-known mistake and it is there's traps in here but let's see what happens after the castles move take that one takes 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 and then now obviously if you do rook takes e4 you can just resign before they play rook d1 because you are going to get made it right so we like wait did we i thought we won a pawn here so why did we do this well a little subtlety here is what this is on you 100 accuracy game white to move what do you do the move here actually is knight to d3 very subtle move d3 not f3 because we need to be able to use this pawn believe it or not after knight d3 it hits the knight you move the knight to the wrong square you're or anywhere really for that matter you're going to lose some material you move the bishop we take the knight so you're in the, in the dilemma you need to do something now so f5 right defends the knight it's the only way to really defend the knight besides a rook d4 but that can be hit with another tempo that's something you don't want so f3 hits the knight like wait a second f3 can't be right right it like can't be right because i have bishop c5 check only way to actually try to you know defend my material here or keep my material bishop c5 hits the check right of course we do want to uh trade this because if we just move the king the knight can get away in some cases right i mean king f1 is actually a bishop b6 which is quite strange here and then pawn takes knight and then takes and like there you give them some initiative you also move the knight and they go g5 themselves so you have to be actually very careful here so the move here is just take it you thought you were getting a piece but cool we didn't get the piece but we're still going to get some material and remember this is a hundred percent accuracy game like wow terras is very strong after knight takes c5 bishop g5 very important detail it hits the rook but we're also hitting something else because after you defend we were hitting bishop e7 Ooh, you had to watch out for that right that's why you went rook d5 which defends the knight it makes total sense okay so now i can you know move this rook away and not worry about losing material or do i after rook e8 this from next move the game is over the next school the game's over white played a move there was no more pgn white to move what is it The move here is C4. <laughs> D4. Simple move here, but this is a nice trap through the roid. It's something, of course, play the, the game back to look at it to see how you can get this in your own games and by yourself as well. So C4, the idea here is absolutely hitting the rook. You're going to lose some material, whether it's through an exchange or through a piece, right? So Marco just threw in the towel there and said, this is over. It's another 100% accuracy game. That was cool. Let's see the next one. Here we are with our next 100% accuracy game with the white pieces we have Hikaru Nakamura and with the black pieces we have Loic Van Welly, right? This was back in 2010. Watch this one. Okay, E4, C5, Knight F3, D6. D4, take, take, Knight F6, right? We got, okay, now you do it, right? Knight C3, I mean, it could go many ways. Classical, still dragon. But this one was a Nidorf Sicilian, the trusty Nidorf, A6. And then we go with the sharp line, which is one of the sharpest, which is Bishop to G5. Very, very sharp line. You can definitely get into trouble. Honestly, for both sides, it's razor sharp. Open Sicilian, razor sharp. Bishop G5, Knight B to D7. All right, this is one of the flexible ways to play against the Bishop G5 variation. And you have many ways. I mean, I'm a fan of the Bishop C4 lines myself. Just quick development, but also uh, you can play F4 as well. There's many moves you can play Bishop E2, like h3 a3 whatever you want in a way right uh it just depends on what you want hikaru chose f4 and then after queen b6 sort of the poison pawn type variations here you can give this pawn up 
or you cannot. He says, I'm going to give it up. Queen D2. Now, are you going to take on B2? Right? Because this is sort of poison pawn like. So he takes it. And this one is just a worse version of the poison pawn. You are not supposed to take this right here. Engine gives equal, but this takes an engine like defense, especially against an aggressive player like Hikaru. After queen takes B2, rook to B1. First off, we hit the queen. Remember, this is 100% accuracy game. Watch the moves it takes. This is 100% accuracy? The moves that were played here? Oh my goodness. After rook to B1, there was queen A3. First move we play here is bishop takes F6, right? Lots of times we do want to deal with this bishop. You also give them ideas with sometimes knight takes E4, H6, and G5. You get them, you give them lots of play. We also want to put in one knight on C5. So we take, okay, bishop takes F6. So you're either going to damage the structure or this knight can't come to C5 to attack the center more with E4 and you just be up a pawn and have some conversation. So bishop takes F6, knight takes F6, right? Then we want to keep some initiative. E5, kick the knight back away. Make sure you move somewhere. If you don't, we, we have E6 and in some cases the knight can swing in the d5 b5 sometimes there's lots of play and it's going to get very sharp here so pawn takes once pawn takes back knight back to d7 and then we have a nice move here let's see if you can find it it's right to move here there's so many possibilities and believe i mean it's crazy that this is 100 percent accuracy here because you have a lot of moves here and, and of course hikaru found the best one here let's see if you can find the best move right to move what do you do Number one on the engine, played knight d5. It's a very simple move. It moves closer um, to the king, to black's king. It's also in the center of the board. These ponies look very nice here. And knight to c7 is a threat, right? So black is like, all right, you know what? Hey, you're already attacking me. I'm already like, why did I take that pawn on b2? Why did Bobby Fischer do the poison pawn variation? Why did he do that? Queen c5, okay? Queen c5, hitting the knight, but also defending c7. So everything seems okay. I can breathe a little bit, but when you have initiative and you're attacking, one thing to do is keep doing that. Knight to b3, hit the queen. 100% accuracy once again. That was the right move, best move. Queen goes to c6. Next move here, knight a5. Look at just the relentless attacking, pushing you back. You gotta do things, you gotta move. Queen went to c5. After queen c5, uh, not really attacking the knight, but maybe some b6 action. I mean, there's all kinds of things that can happen, but definitely white is in the driver's seat. He says, you know what? I'm just going to take the pawn, cash in, hit the queen once again, and it's a tempo. Bishop takes b7. You're going to allow to the rook to the seventh rank. Come on now. Come on. That's not going to happen. So he's like, yeah, I'm already like, this is a problem. Let me just back up. Queen to c6. Let me just chill and relax. You're doing too much, Ikaru. And he does even more here white to move what do you do in this position the move here guys believe it or not is rook b6 this game right here is ridiculous rook b6 and you see the game's over you see the little king there no more pgn no more pg this is a resignation this is 17 moves guys of course the game was over now, why is it over? After rook b6, obviously, you're like, bro, what if I just take the rook? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, was that a mouse slip or over the board slip? What are you doing? Well, of course, this is up to you to find out. Why can't he take the rook? In fact, he can take the rook if you like. But then knight f6, no matter how you capture, queen sack, take with the pawn, take with this pawn. I will even let you take with the rook or the bishop it's illegal but i'll let you do it go go ahead play i don't care i don't even care right what however you take it there's mate on d8 beautiful absolutely stunning 100 percent accuracy from ikaru here nothing less very nice let's move to our final one all right and here we are with our last 100 percent accuracy game we had to go all the way back take it way 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 back in 1911 with uh, the world champion, Alexander Eliakin, or Alakine, as we like to say, versus Oscar Tenor. 1911, white pieces, Alexander Eliakin. All right, E4, E5, and what, what was played back then? Of course, romantic style, right? Of course, you can still play this today, too, as well. The good times, F4. <sighs> the good times. F4, the king's gambit, right? So, bishop C5, we have knight F3. D6 and knight C3 development very easy. In fact, you actually see a transposition here into what we call the Vienna. Uh, after knight of six, bishop C4, knight C6, and D3. You see this in a Vienna nowadays, where if, uh, there's many moves that, of course, white can play and black can play too as well. Many routes. So black chose bishop G4, the more active route. 
um, pretty, uh, it's, it's a most played move actually back then too as well. But nowadays, uh, even Ferruja and Carlson have been in this position before. So it, it's very active, very active play. Knight a4. What we want to do here is grab the bishop pair. It's very important to try to get up these bishops because one, bishop is stopping us from casting and one is bearing down over here. So it can get very sharp, very sharp. He takes f4. We definitely will take this capture. We like this capture. We take the bishop first and then we take the pawn. Right now, black plays knight h5 to hit uh, f4. We have to go back to e3 so we can play bishop f2 in many cases, but also hit c5. So cool. Bishop goes back to e3 to hit the c5 pawn after knight e5, which is a blunder immediately. I'm like, wow, how is this a blunder? I mean, look, he's pending. Like, I'm hitting knight takes d c4. This is, this is nice. How is this a blunt? Double question mark. What? Okay. How though? It's white to move. What did Alexander Eliak do in this position? The saying goes that if you can sack your queen, you do it. Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. But you consider it after with calculation, right? So knight takes e5, right? We're threatening queen takes g4. He's like, well, I have to take the queen. So he takes the queen. Okay. Bishop f7 check was the whole idea, right? If we have king f8, then bishop takes c5 and we get the queen right back with interest. We also could take the knight. We could take, you know, the bishop here. Well, we should take the bishop though because the bishop is defending the knight. But just showing you like whatever what's going on here. Bishop takes c5 is a strong move of king f8. Very strong. You get the material back immediately after a king f8. So, okay, king e7. And you're like, oh, I got this. Well, do you? I mean, yeah, where you go next, chat, right? Where do you go next? Where do you go next? White to move. Where you go? Shout out to you if you said, Bishop G5. <laughs> Shoot, that's. You need to do more tactics. It's not, that's not the move. Calculate. It's not it. Bishop G5 is not it. We block with the knight and have a nice knight. It's not going to be a good knight for you. After bishop g5 check, knight to f6 didn't work. Try again. So what we play is the other way. Bishop takes c5. King cannot run the d6. We have to go king f6. But wait, wait a second. King f6, the knight's hanging. So I lost my queen. The knight's hanging and I don't have a clear mate yet. Or do you? It's white to move. What do you do in this position? Beautiful move here, 100% accuracy. Castles with Jack. <laughs> when do you ever get that? Like this is just rare that you ever get that, right? Now let's go King G5. King G5 didn't happen, but it leads to a pretty mate after Bishop B3. King H4, Rook F5, that's hard to find. This didn't happen in the game, but we're just showing you what happens. Rook F5, G6, Bishop F2 check, Knight G3, and taking, um, or also Bishop G3 leads to mate as well. Uh, this is a prettier one with the pawn, but man, King Hunt. So, okay, we know that that's gonna be a thing, but in the game, believe it or not, it was king takes e5, which leads to what? Finish this off, 100% accuracy. You get a piece of this, it's white to move, what do you do? The move here is simple. Rick f5 and we live, and it's made. That was beautiful. 100% accuracy all the way even back then in 1911 right this was cool stuff 100 accuracy games five of them hopefully you learned something from each of them and of course if you like this video then just wait till after the video then watch more of videos just like this we'll see you guys on the next one